We have spent uh, the last year working with our partners in the federal government, the state government, uh, many local partners and youth to uh, understand the challenges facing youth and families in this community around behavioral health. We have learned a great deal about uh, not just the challenges, but really also the great assets that we have in this community that need to be lifted up so that people recognize their availability, make good use of them. Uh, frankly, the more services are used, uh, the easier it is for me to advocate for them to continue and to grow. We have also uh, learned about where there are opportunities to fill critical gaps and to make certain that we are, are putting together a continuum that touches people's lives across the lifespan. And there are not uh, gaps in service, gaps in identification, uh, gaps in, frankly, access to everything that's necessary for overall great mental health, uh, substance abuse treatment, and physical health. So that process has led us uh, in, in the city to think of a couple of critical ways where we believe we can be helpful. And I want to share them with you today just because some folks are working on this and just to sort of uh, make sure that you're aware that these are places of, of energy for us where we think um, we might be able to make a difference in improving um, the behavioral health services and the overall mental health of our community. In addition to the work that we do through Healthy Start um, and through associated programs there, we have also begun to look really intensively at our WIC program which is a service that we provide for this community uh, through, through funding that we receive from the federal government that's largely uh, available for nutritional supplementation. It has become very clear to us, as it probably is to many of you, that uh, some of the most high-risk children and families in our community uh, pass through the doors of the WIC programs. We have 65,000 visits a year that the city of New Orleans uh, oversees, and about 60% of New Orleans births um, are eligible for the WIC program. And what we have learned um, from these mothers, from these families, from professionals in the area is that this is a really important opportunity to intervene very early in the lives of children, to make certain that they have safety in their homes, that we're understanding how to improve safety in their neighborhoods, and then on when they get into school, but also for the families themselves, for the women um, who are the mothers of these children and sometimes the fathers. We begin to think about this program not just as one in which we are um, providing supplemental nutrition, which is critical, of course, for everybody's brain, but actually also providing um, an understanding about preventing long-term consequences of, of exposure to violence, the exposure to stress, as the free thinkers clearly articulate. We've been doing work with the schools to make certain they understand what services are available to uh, develop training that is really existing in community, but linking that with teachers and administrators and parents so that when um, stress and uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, et cetera, present itself in school-age children, it's easily recognizable by the, the teachers and, and the uh, administrators in the school. This is something that you have to refresh every so often in the community. We did it after Katrina. We let it wane a bit. It's time to refresh and make sure that everybody is up to speed so we don't let any kids slip through. We have a bit of other work in that area, including uh, working to stratify the schools according to the resources they have, so we know where most energy should be uh, addressed, and providing them with tools to increase awareness. A bookmark that has Judge Johnson's um, contact information on it, not yours personally, yes, but I might go there. Uh, but so the 826-2675 for a crisis line and the 568-3130 for regular appointments, since now, since this summer, you're able to handle services for kids as well, which is a really um, critical part of the family continuum. And um, uh, identifying what assets are available. Uh, the Behavioral Health Resource Guide, which is already in the second edition and now it has a youth edition, we have some available for you all here today. It's something we will continue to update and provide because, again, the services are there, we want them used. Um, if they're not there, it's a way that we can understand where the gaps are and we can advocate to put the legislature with others to make sure we fill those, those critical gaps. The last piece um, really goes back to this idea of working co collaboratively with the community. And um, Judge Johnson has been a great partner in not only educating me, uh, since I'm, I'm uh, just an internist, about mental health and substance abuse and how important it is to think about recovery, treatment, um, and prevention all at once, is that um, we have been able to pull together a, what we call a forum of folks who are in this work in this space and are really thinking about challenges in mental health and substance abuse for our entire community. We've been producing a, a new dashboard about the crisis system and are working on one for youth. 
We've got a lot of great feedback from many providers in this room. So we are continuing in the health department to work with our partners, not just to figure out what's out there and what we need to add, but make sure we're monitoring the system so we know if it's working or not, and doing this in incremental ways so that we can move to this better future. And I'll just close um, by, again, thanking the Rethinkers, where I'm, which I'm compelled to do um, at every event, because they have been, uh, I think, a, a very powerful voice in this community and, frankly, nationally about the importance of justice. And considering that uh, word as a framework for thinking about how we address uh, many things in our lives, it's going to be uh, essential for us as we go forward, particularly thinking about youth mental health, Mental health is a challenge, yes, for probably 25% of the kids in our community, but it disproportionately affects low-income and communities, and it has disproportionate effects along racial and ethnic lines.